Thank you so much for having us today. Um, as academics, we love to learn, and so today has been fabulous in listening to all of your stories and learning about all the great things that you're doing in your organizations. And um, I have to share a personal story that Allie and I are those rogue alumni that started our own network um, from our PhD program. And so uh, we have an annual conference and we organize an event for all of uh, the alumni. We actually got a list of all of the alumni of the program and invited to that. And we had some of the faculty, um, this was at Ohio State, that said, why are you doing this? They should be out networking with other people. And they, we said, they are networking. They're networking with us. And so we wanted to provide the value of our own personal alumni network. So of course, as academics, we went to the literature to see what does research say about alumni networks and about having the value and connecting. And at that time, um, and this was what, 2015 maybe that we started yeah. that? Uh, there wasn't much in research at all. Uh, the only research on alumni were really on educational alumni programs in universities and colleges. And so that really is what motivated us to start to look into, well, what do we know about the value of connecting with others and creating those networks? And so today we're gonna to talk to you about some of what we've learned through this research um, and really talking about designing programs and evaluating programs for alumni. So a couple things, Erin already told you who we are. Um, she's Erin McCurious, I'm Ellie Dockner. We're both professors of management. And we're really, academics really interested in employee mobility and this idea that people are going to move throughout their career. We know that the average employee stays less than four years now. And so how do we manage a, that transition, like Matt mentioned, coming out of an organization? And then how do we manage the alumni? And so when I was thinking about coming to speak today, all I could think about was, okay, why are we here, right? Like, we are learning from all these people living and breathing this all day, every day. And usually when we talk about this, it's either to other academics, and we're talking really like deep theory, or to our students, and we're really just teaching about the employee-employee relationship, um, really, you know, higher level. Um, or it's to organizations where we're trying to sell, and, and not sell, but really motivate them to think about employee mobility being okay and alumni programs being good. And this isn't an audience of any of those things. And so really what we're trying to bring to the table today is this idea that there's academic research now in this space of employee mobility. We're a part of that conversation. We want to continue to be. Um, and we want to help build that like academic practitioner gap. So how can scholarly research inform what you're all doing? And how can the phenomena you're living out all day every day help us in our research? And so that's kind of the angle we're gonna take that's a little bit unique. And I often say, we're like the toddlers. So you guys do things, you do what you do, you gather the, what, the information you gather, and we're the why, but why? But why, right? So we're trying to identify what are the mechanisms? Why are things happening the way to do? How? Are these phenomena living out and in what circumstances are they most likely, are alumni most likely to create value for an organization? So we have two related projects we're building upon here. One is our Harvard Business Review article that Emma mentioned, and that was turned to party employees into loyal alumni, a holistic approach to employee offboarding. And our idea of offboarding in that article really was this building on the socialization literature that offboarding technically happens like before someone ever leaves as we discuss careers. So that comes with what Matt said at the manager level of this idea of developing employees. You know, is, a, is an organization's managers hoarding talent or developing talent to move? Are we having these conversations? Then at the point of exit is what does our exit management look like? And we keep coming back to that first panel, but are we ripping up ID cards and closing laptops? Or are we helping facilitate the transition out? And then finally is the alumni management. And this is you know, most of what we're gonna talk about today. And this is what our other article we're building upon talks about is this systematic design, this strategic design of corporate alumni programs to achieve positive value that we want. So the premise of today is that we really wanna understand post-separation value and how organizations can try to minimize positive value and limit negative value 
through exit and alumni management and how to shift an alumni's thinking up, hopefully, um, to be more positive in their attitudes, to be more positive in their behaviors. Um, we've started doing uh, initial interviews already with managers of corporate alumni programs. I think some are in this room, uh, but that's not us. And we've um, started interviewing some alumni. We've done some preliminary surveys. We're going to do more surveying, all to kind of test this idea of what can organizations do to help create that positive value from their alumni. Um, in the article that we published in Org Dynamics, we talk about the strategic design. And based on my personal interest and passion in employee training and development and learning and development, I use the instructional system design approach, um, or we use the instructional system design approach to, to and bring that to the um, corporate alumni development um, programs. And so one thing that we heard in our interviews a little bit, and why I bring this to light again, even though we already did the EA webinar on this paper, is that this strategic intentional approach, the analyze stage is so important. We have to start with, is this needed? Um, how it links to your organizational goals and practices. And while that seems like a first step that you might only do if you're starting a new program, the importance of, I, I forget who said this, but someone said, okay, we've launched, we're done. Um, right, this is where that importance is, it needs to be highlighted over and over. It's an iterative process to figure out uh, what design changes we need to make, what we need to continue to be doing. So an example I'll share from our interviews is that we heard over and over about the disconnect between exit management and alumni management. So there's inconsistency in how people are being let go, or voluntarily or not, but how exit occurs. And then there's inconsistency in how that information is shared with whoever's running the alumni program. And so we're thinking of extending the employee life cycle to alumni. If we're thinking we want these alumni programs to be um, an extension of the employee experience, any part of talent management long term, this disconnect is a little bit problematic. So if we have top management support, we decide to move forward, we know our goals, we design a program, we develop, we implement, we evaluate. If we see that we can't achieve our goals and objectives without some type of better connection, whether it's through software or it's through training managers, that's an important step. And so again, for some of you this may be new, some of you may have seen the webinar um, that we did with Emma, but it's really to highlight the importance of having a strategic approach, which means it doesn't stop when you evaluate it the first time. It just starts over again. Um, everything needs to be aligned. So this idea that we're aligning from top down based on what, what the company or organization wants and needs and across. So the things that we're offering don't um, either contradict or not align well with each other. We want to make sure that whatever we're choosing to offer creates kind of a, a story or a package or a bundle that is going to have that value to them and help us achieve our goals. So through the interview process, we really tried to learn from all of you that were leading these programs of what were the main components of design that created an effective alumni program, you know, this idea of success and what does that mean? And so we heard a lot of different examples, but we started to converge upon several themes. And um, so we use the analogy trails here to uh, talk about some of those themes. So first in tracking and analyzing data, you know, if you don't have good data, you don't have a program. Uh, someone earlier had asked, um, I really need the personal email of the individuals that are leaving my organization so I can continue to contact them. So making sure that you have a way to get that data. Of recognizing achievements and you know celebrating their time here so we feel like that's very much a part of the offboarding program but leads to that connection between offboarding and alumni management and um, allocating resources um, you know there's a lot of resources that you can provide internally or externally we heard all kinds of examples um, in the org dynamics article we give a lot of those examples some here are listed are career coaching or um, nonprofits. Others would be the Sparks uh, Network, those things that you have that provide value to employees beyond um, their time with you. Uh, information sharing. So, you know, not only what's happening at the company, but even small things, a lot of the alumni that we talked to, they really found value in saying, oh, so and so got promoted, or, um, you know, this is what's happening to people in the organization, that they really wanted to hear about 
those that they connected with. So if you know if you get an alumni magazine from any college or university, you click to the back and you say, oh, here's who got married and here's what happened to those individuals. That was what alumni wanted to hear um, information on. Uh, learning and development initiatives. This goes back to that theme. I love the career mapping, the AI that you guys are going to be doing because the skills development came up again and again of really providing people access to your training and development systems after they left, providing them opportunities to upskill uh, and gain more skills throughout their um, career. Socializing and networking, these opportunities to provide uh, tickets to sporting events, um, to concerts, to cultural events. Again, you see the value, we've heard a lot about this all day, of meeting in person and really getting people together to celebrate. So once there's the design plan and we want to evaluate the program, there are certain things that, especially as we're looking at post-separation value that might be measured. And one I hope we're not stepping on toes. We thought you'd go first and we could skim over anything that you, you touched on this similar topic, I think. Um, but there are a couple, just like in the training literature, that we build upon. So the idea of these reactions, so in employees and alumni satisfaction surveys, did you like the event? How satisfied were you with this or that? Even what are you interested in? Just those attitudes by employees can be measured via survey. Uh, behaviors, and here's one important thing that we're separating out that in our interviews weren't always distinct. The difference between behaviors being what alumni do and results being the outcome to the organization. Because the behaviors lead to the results. The results are what we call post-separation value, and it could be positive or negative. And so how we measure those um, could be meaningful when we do things like predictive analytics. It's important to think about those as distinct um, constructs. So behaviors would be things like we've heard people measure engagement as how many people come, what's the open rate, um, what's the participation or volunteer rates, uh, what, you know, how many alumni registered this week, things like that. Results are more of the outcome for the organization, either the positive or negative value. So human capital being the talent acquisition, so saving time, saving money, um, having boomerangs, getting referrals. Reputational capital, so better net promoter score, better last door ratings through alumni postings. And the social capital, so the ongoing relationships, client revenues, and quality of partnerships. Whether it be kind of mentor-mentee between internal um, employees and alumni, or um, potential partners or customers, um, if people could bring business back to the company. So um, overall, uh, these are some of the things that we'd recommend measuring. These are some of the things that we measure in our work that assess the overall value of the network, always tied to the objective. So not every company is going to assess every one of these things all the time. Um, but we're going to tie it back to what we hope to, to be achieving. OK, so Matt, I swear we had this finished before you mentioned dead to me. Um, <laughs> but thank you for setting this up really nicely. <laughs> but we do appreciate the consistency in thinking. Um, so one, you know, we talked about the behaviors. And in our research, we call it citizenship versus counterproductive behaviors. But ultimately, it's, it's our alumni doing good or our alumni doing bad. Um, and then we know there's a cost of turnover, which in our figure we shared with you is an accounted for. And so the purpose of this is just to show that the evolution of alumni value is just that. It's an evolution. And it could change and it could shift and the pathway someone's on might, you know, go back and forth. But ultimately, what we do in this two by two that I'm not going to read word for word is say that we kind of need to redefine the way we think of turnover as functional or dysfunctional. Because if you look at turnover only at the point of exit, we're not taking into account the good or bad an employee might do when they leave. And so we need to think about what the employee is doing and the cost of losing of them together as an interaction to really understand if maybe they're better as alumni, so we have better as friends. If there's low turnover cost, it wasn't so bad to lose them. Maybe we even wanted to. And there are these excellent alumni working for a partner that could work for us. It was probably actually really good for that person to go. They're better as friends, right? We build on the romantic literature a little bit to play with our categories here. Um, if the cost of turnover is really high, you know, it's probably maybe a star employee that we would have liked to keep. And yet, they're still really good alumni, too. They're engaging in all kinds of great citizenship behaviors. Well, here we have a sustained value. They're a kindred spirit. Wherever they are, we're going to be close. On the flip side, we have that negative value. We have those negative behaviors. 
So if we have an alumni engaging in negative behaviors, but their turnover cost was low, it's dead to me. Like, that, that's not someone that we are gonna try to overly engage in if we're customizing any of our alumni stuff or anything like that. Like, there, there's kind of a lost cause at that point. Um, but there may be people that are the ones that got away, and this is where we lose value, and maybe um, having them as a boomerang employee or doing something you know, targeted to recruit or retain them would have been better. So that's a high turnover cost and high counterproductive behavior, or at least not citizenship behavior in that case. These all range, these are continuums. So it's not like we're gonna clump every alumni we have in a box, but it's more to recognize that our strategy for retention and our strategy for recruitment and our strategy for alumni management matter based on the type of lever that we, that we have and, and the behaviors they may engage in. And we can, as alumni managers, try to shift them into a more favorable box. So really the next steps for us is to get into some of the nuances of how does this evolution occur? What are some of the questions that we need to consider going forward? And so the first question is, you know, which practices influence attitudes and behaviors for who and when? And, um, you know, how can we play a role in that? So one thing that we've started to look into are how age and career stage matter. There's some research on boomerangs that suggests that those that leave earlier on in their career are more likely to come back. And so kind of looking at those differences, um, which alumni provide the most value and how those turnover costs um, really testing the two by two we just showed. Um, where do alumni net networks matter more or less? In what industries and contexts and what firm characteristics matter? And also where are alumni going? So there's some research that shows that you can have positive client relationships if your alumni are going to your people, clients or people you cooperate with, but if you're going to competitors, it's much less likely that you'll have those um, continued relationships with them. And then how does the employee experience relate to the alumni experience? So we intentionally start at the point of turnover to look at how do these exit management and alumni management affect the AOR, the alumni organizational relationship overall, but we know that how people experience the culture and the organization matter. And so um, one of the other papers that we're working on right now is uh, focus on this idea of establishing a climate for career mobility, which is really practices that support movement, either within or outside of an organization. Saying, you know, if you know the term psychological safety, making it comfortable to talk about the fact that you want to move on, whether it's to another job in the company, outside of the organization, and really having those career discussions. And so all of these questions really um, point to the need of getting more data and more evidence. You know, as we started to do research in this area, we see that there's little pieces and bits here and there, but we really want to get a better picture. And so we'd love to collaborate with you in doing so. Thank you very much, Alina.